Hello, in today's video, we will be going over the assembly of the Z motor module and upper Z idlers for the Voron V2.4 printer. Now, as of the time of filming, the manual has not been released yet. It is still being worked on. So some of the order of operations that you will see in this video may change slightly. However, if you follow this video, you will have an assembled and functional Z motor module and upper Z idler. So starting off, the first thing we are going to do for the Z motor module is install our heat set inserts. Now there are six that we have to install here as well as three up here. So this is the style of heat set insert we will be using. As you can see, there are two rows of knurling and they go in counter uh, directions to each other. And then there's also one slightly smaller outer diameter section. So this is the lead in essentially for the insert. Now for installing the heat set inserts, I use a soldering iron. This is nothing special, just a $10 AliExpress special. Uh, for setting heat set inserts, you do want your iron set to the lowest temperature you can go. You want to gently melt these into place. If you go too hot, too quick, uh, you do risk uh, burning the plastic. And I find that if I go too hot, too quick, it's very easy to tilt or set the inserts in a way so that they're not perpendicular to the hole. You do want them as straight as possible. Okay, so the heat set inserts are installed. You just want to give them a second to cool down. Now again, uh, I do have the temperature set as low as I can go on this. And in this case, it is about 220 degrees. And the nozzle tip I use is just the standard conical uh, tip that came with it. However, I did file it down slightly so it's not as long, so it doesn't stick out past the inserts. Now, if you do uh, set your inserts in and find that some plastic has oozed up and it's no longer flush, you can simply take like an X-Acto knife and just skim the extra plastic. Now, the next thing we're going to do is assemble the, uh, I guess you could call it the drive shaft for the Z motor module. Now, for this, you will need your 60 millimeter long uh, five millimeter pin with flats, your 80 tooth idler, put that through, take your bearing, put that on the end. And then the next thing will be two of your one millimeter thick washers, another bearing, two more washers, a 20 tooth drive gear, and then lastly, your third bearing. And then you take your drive stack and assemble it into the body like so. Okay. Now one thing you will notice, uh, if you are using the nine millimeter belts, you will have a nine millimeter uh, tooth gear here. In this case, uh, I only have six millimeter on hand. I don't have an extra nine mil, but this is where a nine mil will be. There is no physical difference in the printed components for using a nine millimeter versus a six millimeter Z belt. The assembly procedure is the same. So once you have it installed, what you will do is you will take your 80 tooth gear and your 20 tooth gear here, and you will compress them against the center bearing. And that is your spacing to ensure that these are both possible properly spaced out. When you tighten your 20 tooth and 80 tooth gears, you will want thread locker on the set screws and you will want to ensure they are indexed off of the flat on your five millimeter rod. There you go. That's installed. Now, before we put the other half on, uh, one thing I do like to do is anytime I have two printed components that mate together, I simply take a file and just give it a quick run over both mating surfaces. Uh, this ensures that, you know, sometimes, especially if you have Z hop and natal, you might have a little blob or a little bit of stringiness. This just gives you a flatter mating surface. And then before we final assemble, 
of course we will want to install our 188 millimeter belt. Put that back into the body. Take our other half and put them together. And then once both halves are together, we take our M3 by 40 millimeter screws and we screw both halves together. And what I like to do, because these also locate both halves together partially, I like to screw them down in an alternating pattern. First finger tight, and then I go along after, and then actually tighten all six screws. And there we go. That is the main component of the drive gear for your Z motor module assembled. So now we'll just take my little frame analog piece here and we will bolt this to the frame. And you will want the body flush with the front of the frame in the extrusions. There is an indexing tab on this portion here. Make sure that is in the slot and screw it down once everything is squared up and in position. And there we go. Now the next part we will be assembling is your motor mount. For this, we take the printed bracket and install it to your NEMA 17 motor with M3 by eight millimeter screws, four of them. And then once the motor bracket is installed, we take the latch portion here, line that up, put our two M5 by 10 millimeter screws in position. And then for this portion, you take the 16 tooth gear, feed it under the belt, and then you sort of rotate it into position. Line up your T-nuts, and then when you screw these down, you just want them slightly snug. You still want to be able to move your motor mount. And then once your motor mount is installed and these two M5 screws are just slightly loose, you actuate the latch, which puts the proper tension on the 188 millimeter drive belt. And then you tighten down your screws. Voila. That is the Z module assembled. Now, of course, uh, there will be a shroud that goes over the front as part of the printed skirt, but that is non-structural. So as it is right now, this is the assembled and functional portion of your Z motor mount. Now, after your Z motor module is assembled, you will have to add this one portion here, and this is for mounting your rubber feet. So you will take this part, install an M5 nut. What I like to do, uh, anytime I have a nut in a situation like this where it risks falling into something, I just put a little dab of super glue on it just to hold it in place. Flip this over and using M3 by eight millimeter screws, screw it in place. And then you would screw the foot on at this point. However, I actually don't have a spare foot at this time to screw on. So this is as far as I'll go for now for the Z motor module. Now for the upper Z idlers, this is actually a really assemb simple assembly. 
the first thing we are going to do is take an M3 nut and install that into this portion here. Seat that at the bottom. We will take a 16 millimeter long M3 screw, install that through this portion. And then what you will do is you will just get it started. And then pretty much as soon as you see the screw come out through the top of the nut, that's as far as you need to go for now. You will take your idler and then you're going to take an M5 by 30 millimeter screw and install that. Now these parts are not threaded so you will be cutting a little bit of thread and it's simply a friction fit. This is just to keep the screw from walking out essentially. So as you screw it in, make sure that it lines up with your idler. And then as soon as the head of the screw bottoms out, you're done. You don't need to tighten this. And you do want a little bit of play. So that way if there is any slight misalignment of your belt, it'll compensate for it. And then we take two M5 by 30 millimeter screws and put that in the idler and then again we'll take my frame analog here and we will install that into the frame now if you look there are two slight variations in the idler there's an a and b and the only difference is the direction of this little indexing tab so when you install it this indexing tab will index into the extrusion next to it so we simply screw this down And then once in position again now when you are assembling the frame you will want to leave these a little bit loose and the reason for that is with these tight this portion cannot move so you do want this to have a little bit of play because after you run your belt through it you will use this m3 screw here to properly tension your z belts and then of course, once they are tensioned, then you screw down the M5 screws and this locks everything into place. Thank you for watching. If you do have any questions, please feel free to ask them in the comment section below or hit me up on the Voron Discord. I do plan on continuing this build series for the Voron V2.4 and I have been streaming on Saturday nights now uh, around 8 p.m. Eastern. So if you are bored on a Saturday night and wish to follow my build along of a Voron V2.4, please feel free to join me. Thank you and have a great day.